Fantasy. Today we're going to explore the blood pool hand once again, and I call it a blood pool hand because that's one of the um, Bubishi's um, terminologies for it. Six G hands of the Shaolin, or the six energy hands of the Shaolin, six wind hands of the Shaolin. There's so many different names for it. Uh, this one hand position um, I've displayed so many times. One of my favorites. I use it quite a bit. Uh, you can see it in um, Wichiru in uh, Sunset Rule. You can see it in Gojuru, Super Empire, Tensho. You can see it in um, uh, Fuxiao from uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu. It's even in Northern Praying Mantis where you can see the mantis hands, uh, the, the same hand position. So uh, what are the different variables that we can attack with it? Well, I, again, we can use it as a ballistic striking like in the Wei Chi Ru is a very dramatic strike down into the neck area, right into this area here. A lot of great nerves and um, veins and um, arteries down there. So I'll show you the effect of that. I'm not going to show you the effect with um, this hand position per se. I'm going to use this um, but it, because I, I filmed it uh, on a different um, a video for a different kata that use this primarily to hook down into that area. But again, you can just imagine using your fingers in there as well. And a lot of people think, okay, hitting with the fingertips, uh, who would do that? Well, you know, if you condition your hands and you use it correctly, it's an excellent strike. And uh, the way the Weichi uh, Pangai Nun uh, practitioners do it, they practice striking with those fingertips. And you can hit quite hard, as you can hear it knocking off the back of my other hand, um, you can really strike in with that. You also have it in rising actions, okay, from, uh, say, Super Empire of Gojiru. Uh, you can also see it in many other different styles where it rises. So not only do we have a descending action that you could get uh, into this uh, clavicle area and these targets, this nerve-rich, blood-rich um, area, but you can also attack up. Now there's many different targets you can attack up. The one we're going to describe today is the carotid sinus in here. And we're going to attack the, um, the neck uh, primarily. Not the front of the neck as, as it looks like I'm doing. I'm attacking with this action. I'm going to be attacking the back of the neck. And in the back of the neck you have the vertebrae and you have the nerves coming out from the vertebrae. Between C2 and C4 there's the uh, phrenic nerve emanates uh, or originates. Uh, and it travels down to the, um, uh, stimulate the diaphragm and to make the diaphragm work. Well, if you attack the back of the neck in such a way with this, um, by attacking from the front, you're going to make that nerve pinch and the person will have tr trouble breathing. So we'll show you that and we'll show you the ramifications of, of the clavicle area as well. But again, it's all using this kakushike, uh, kakushiken, excuse me, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, write your comments below. Um, also, if you have any questions on some of your katas or the hand positions or the, the blocking positions, anything in your katas you want to discuss or see um, a variation on, uh, just let us know. Put them in the comments below. We'll start a discussion and I can give you other targets as well. So it's up to you how much you interact with this channel, how much more information you can get. So don't just watch the video for entertainment. Well, you can if you want, but if you want to get real worth out of it, start a discussion and we'll get that uh, topic covered for you so you can have more information to take back to your style and prosper. Thanks for watching. Thank you.
into the chest and you could feel it like you could hear me cough. So if something uh, went to uh, down here in the lungs and constricted around it, and then when I got hit again, yes, pain, it released so I could breathe out again. You could hear me cough again, so that's good. As we're grabbing here, pull, okay, to get the person <laughs> okay. you made my legs come out. exposed, okay? So my next target's going to be right down into the clavicle hole, okay? Stomach 12 area if yeah. you look at, at the pressure points. Now if you do this and you strike down, you're going to see that that has a debilitating attack just on the arm, just on a surface strike. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, if I've turned the guy's head and I really expose this and I dig in with a, a, a type of an action. <laughs> <laughs> Did you shoot him? So the force has to be um, uh, enough that you can get past it. You okay? Yeah. You can pass it on again? Yeah. yeah. Is your arm functional? <laughs> I don't want to move it. <laughs> I guess it's left in. Okay, right? so um, explain, <laughs> explain what happened on that attack. It felt... First, my whole body seized, my, my legs just completely curled up, and then it was just a concentrated pain of everything just seizing up inside of here, and it was like I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move my legs. It was just, everything was just black, and just nothing was working. Okay. When you come down out of this, this area, what happens is you have, from the heart, you have the vascular tissue that comes over on an arch, okay, the aortic arch or the jugular arch. It's on both sides, okay? You have branches that go up into the head via this, this area here. But from here, there's a major plexus of nerves that come down here, the brachial plexus, they call it. There's also a plexus of um, vascular tissue as well. So you're attacking both. Now, what I did the first time, which you saw, I just dropped them a little bit, is I just gave them a light poke down and in. But that's not the technique. The technique, when you do in this form, you're gonna see little rotations. Okay, don't pay so much attention to, okay, pay attention to the weapon, but don't pay attention to the movement outward. It's, that's not the issue. The issue is these little movements where this was just hooking down before it comes right back up again. Okay, so we pulled the guy's head back to expose that target, and then we dug in like that can opener that we were doing earlier coming from this direction. All right, so what I did was I went into the hole of the clavicle right in through there, I not only pushed down with pressure, but I, I sealed it this way because I didn't want to get one vein or one nerve. I wanted to cut across all of them to disrupt more tissue. Okay? He went black because I got deep enough to get the vein. Okay? And he seized up because of, before I get to the vein, I get to the nerve. So I got the two actions in one. It sealed his breath because they came in from the top. Okay? Again, everything from here to here will stop the breathing because the bronchial tubes will seal or they'll constrict, okay? And so I got a lot of things going on. I got the breath, I've got the nerves, and I got the blood. That's a good target. <laughs>